Hey, Lenny Crash, 25th of July, 2024. I do pray you well, sincerely. I've just been compiling notes, particularly on the Trump attempted assassination on the 13th, and the things that I've seen that relate to this. And quite honestly, I would rather just show you all these notes that I've taken on it and leave it at that because it's quite overwhelming, to be honest with you. It's just like everybody else. We see what we see, we see in part, but we perceive these truths out of these things because they witness to us in Scripture that gives us an understanding of where we are in God's prophetic timeline. And that's just how I see it. This Trump Peace and Prosperity Plan, a.k.a. the Abraham Accords, the Deal of the Century, so on and so forth, I do believe we're going to see this come back into the picture. You have Netanyahu in, in the country meeting with Trump, who isn't even president, but he's meeting with him as if he were. But we can't forget that the Rebbe Schneerson, who many looked upon as the Messiah himself, told Netanyahu, you will be the one to hand the scepter to Messiah. 40 years ago, when Netanyahu was Israel's ambassador to the United Nations, he met Menachem Mendel Schneerzen, the leader of the Chabad Lubavitch movement, known simply as the Rebbe. The Rebbe believed Netanyahu had a mission from God to prepare Israel for the coming of the Messiah, or in Hebrew, the Moshiach. Soon after entering Israel's parliament for the first time, Netanyahu paid his respects to his mentor. So we got to keep that in mind because they do have an understanding of things and they co-opt prophecy and self-fulfill it in order to fool and deceive the world. That, that's literally how they do it. They invert God's word and his prophecy. They turn everything upside down. They do their work in the dark. They are the sons of darkness, portraying themselves as the sons of light. That's just the way it works. And if you don't see this stuff, you're going to fall for this, that Trump is this warrior king savior. I'm astounded at how many professing Christians are buying hook, line, and sinker into this whole thing. That Civil War movie, I do believe that. I, we are witnessing a civil war, a coup is occurring, and it's building to what will be a civil war. Don't know exactly how it's going to play out, but it's going to be ugly. That much I know. So, the 13th was a Saturday, a Shabbat, and you have Netanyahu visiting Trump, who isn't president, and he cannot leave until Saturday night because he can't fly during the Shabbat, which is exactly two weeks since the Trump event. I just go through this stuff. The shooter, there's a bunch of stuff on him too, but I'll wait to share on that stuff. The big thing, you know, is you got to understand that there is a principle of inversion in the Bible, and that is how the devil operates. It's what he uses to deceive. He'll use scripture very cleverly and just lure in and deceive these well-meaning people who profess Christ, but they only profess him, they don't possess him, or else they would begin to see that this man is being held up as a Messiah figure. He likes being put in that elevated position. He loves it. So the Bohemian Grove literally held the cremation of care ritual on the same day as this Trump incident. You cannot get around that. And it's interesting that it was started in 1878. Trump just turned 78. And it's been 147 years. And he's running for the 47th president. Which I believe we will not see. I believe that Biden 46 that'll go down in history as the last official president of the United States, even though he took it by fraud 
it still will go down in history that way. And it's interesting to me because that 46 is the same amount of years they spent building that second temple, which was destroyed on the 9th of Av, which is coming up. Jesus told them, destroy it and I will raise it in three days, speaking of the temple of his body. But they just didn't get it and they still don't get it. And people are saying, you know, God spared Trump. He's God's man. Of course God spared Trump. He's sovereign over everything, everyone. But you still have the free will to choose the master that you will serve. And Trump, as you know, you can't serve two masters. He serves the master of mammon money. He loves money. And they put him through a ritual on that stage that mimics the consecration of the high priest with the ram's blood on the right ear, on the right thumb, and on the right toe. And he lost his shoes during the whole thing. What's going on? Was he shot? Was he wounded? Then we heard him on the microphone saying, let me grab my shoes as they tried to take them off. So one can safely assume that all the elements are there for this inverted consecration of their high priest. And it's so interesting to me that the Church of Satan, the fifth degree high priest is literally titled Maga. Maga Magnus is the title of the high priest of the Church of Satan. You can't get around that. A servant is given the ability in the Old Testament to be freed after six years, but he can choose to stay and serve that master for his remainder of his life. And the master will pierce his ear through to mark him as a lifelong servant. He was marked through as a servant. That's what he is fallen into. God can do anything, but as it stands right now, he is your Barabbas. He is taking on the role of the high priest that will lead you to your death. That's really what it amounts to. It really is. It's interesting, too, that the servant of the high priest that Peter, when they were apprehending Jesus in the garden, cut off his right ear. And what did Jesus tell him? He told him, put away your sword, Peter. But Trump is telling you, he is your vengeance. In fact, check out this clip, what he tells you he is. This is the final battle. They know it, I know it, you know it, everybody knows it, this is it. Either they win or we win. And if they win, we no longer have a country. But I do it for you and that's what I'm doing it for, I do it for you. And if you put me back in the White House, their reign is over. In 2016, I declared, I am your voice. Today I add, I am your warrior, I am your justice, and for those who have been wronged and betrayed, I am your retribution, I am your retribution. I will totally obliterate the deep state. And then you had COVID come in and a lot of things had to happen and we did a great job. We never got the credit for that job, but we did a great job with COVID. I am your voice, I am your warrior, I am your justice. I am your retribution. I am your retribution. So think about it. He's telling you, fight, 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 like Barabbas did. He fits all these types perfectly, perfectly. And people want to continue believing the whole spiel, man. It just, it really is quite frustrating. So he told you he is not only your voice. I know that the voice of God is... His word is my foundation, but not him. He's your voice. He's your warrior now. There's your king warrior. And that's what the people wanted back in Samuel when he said, that king is going to take your sons and daughters and put them to work and you're going to lose your property, your children. We don't care. Give us our warrior king because he is your justice. You understand what I'm saying here? There's only one just and it ain't him. And he's now saying that he is your retribution. Vengeance is of the Lord. And this man is putting himself in that position 
people are supporting it and elevating him to that position, and they're going to pay a price. The angel flag that appeared, you know, this guardian angel saved him. I believe it. I believe we all witnessed a miracle, literally. From, um, you know, before it happened, the flag above got blown in the wind and it got tied into literally what looked like an angel. Did you see that video? I didn't see it. Oh my gosh, you guys have to find that. It, it, it was, it was, it was truly, it was like an angel coming down. It was the American flag tied. They had to bring it down and all the people in the stands helped unravel it. And it was literally before he came out on the stage. I'm sorry, but there is absolutely no way Almighty God would command one of his angels to take form in this way. But there is one type of angel, fallen that is, that would gladly take advantage of this emotional experience to spiritually influence those who are not truly practicing biblical spiritual discernment. They attribute his wearing of the armor of God because he was shot at 611, and that's in Ephesians 611. But yet, they only see these things in the natural, in the flesh. They don't see it in the spiritual, which is what it is. The armor is spiritual armor. I mean, does Trump express any of the attributes of the armor of God? Does he share, or does he even know the gospel of salvation? Does he wear that helmet? Does he? Is he girt with truth? Is he an honest, truthful man? Honestly. Is he righteous? Does he don the righteousness that's imputed to us by God because we believe him? We received his word as truth and believe the gospel of Jesus Christ, the only way to salvation. Does he preach the gospel of peace? No, he's telling you to fight, fight, fight. Or the shield of faith? Does he tell you, put your faith in Christ and his salvation, not in me? Does he wield the sword of the Spirit, the word of God? No, he himself admits that he really doesn't know it very well. And he said, uh, no, he may not know the Bible as well as some. He may not know it actually so well at all. You see what I'm saying? He wields the sword of rebellion and insurrection, and essentially it's against God. Just telling you guys, this is all becoming extremely evident. And if you don't pull yourself out of this delusion, it is going to draw you in. And the end is not good, man. It's not. So I pray that you see the error in all of this if you are believing that this man is going to bring in the new golden age as he has promised America is on the cusp of a new golden age but we will have the courage to seize it we're going to take it we're going to make it a current i mean we're going to bring this into a golden age like never seen before he's making godlike promises that he cannot will not ever fulfill but the itchy ears just consume it and blindly follow him stop it just stop it man and i'm not calling him the antichrist but boy i'll tell you what he sure does fill a lot of the criteria of that figure biblically there's many antichrists the bottom line is he is at best deceived himself buying into this persona creating a cult of personality but in turn he is deceiving millions and millions of people you know he's greatly in error and allowing himself to be portrayed as a christian a follower of the way of jesus and he's not jesus told us you will know them by their fruit do men gather grapes of thorns you know, you can't have two masters. And the MAGA followers and supporters who profess Jesus are not calling him to the carpet on these things. As a Christian, we are to be caring, loving. We are commanded to correct one another who are in error. Not let them continue in these heresies, endangering themselves and others with false hope, 
lies. I mean, really, beware of false Christ, false prophets, and false teachers. They will fill your ears, your itching ears, with smooth things of peace and prosperity. But of course, first, you have to engage and execute the necessary vengeance, right? So you can bring in the new golden age. Do you see the subtlety of this deception? How it tempts the flesh, but deceives in the spirit? You know, my whole point is to warn you of the enormous, cunningly crafted deceptions the adversary constructs to ensnare your very soul. You need the sword of the word. You need the whole armor to withstand the wiles of the devil, not the sword of vengeance like Peter thought, right? And now Trump to fulfill the lusts of the flesh. We're in a war. We're in a battle. And it's a battle of deception. And it's an eternal consequence. Who you serve. Are you a faithful servant to Almighty God in Jesus Christ? Or do you serve this world and the gods of it? It's a question all of us need to ask ourselves on a regular basis. Because you can slip right into it if you're not careful. So be prepared. Yes, mentally. Yes, physically. But above all, spiritually. And God bless each and every one of you. Peace and grace to you. Many fish. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, 